Hey everybody, welcome back to the next cast. I'm your host Matt. And I'm Tyler. Alright, so Tyler, this is different. I can actually, there's like quality here. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so if you're watching the video version of the podcast, whether you're watching in the live stream, if you're watching live, we do record this live every Thursday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time or around thereabouts. We're always late. Like, we're always late. And, and then we usually bullshit for like a half an hour. So we do record live. So if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash LinuxCast, we do this record this live. But if you're watching the video that comes out, you know, a day later, you'll notice that the quality has changed just a bit. No green flashes anywhere to be seen. It's gonna, it's so good. Uh, and all we had to do was stop using Discord and use Jitsi. <laughs> yep. That's all we had to do. Um, yep. Just that free and open source software. Fantastic. Yeah, it's it's good. Um, yeah, it's it's really good. We'll talk more about it when you do your pick because it's it's good. Anyways, Tyler, my friend. Yes. What have you been doing on Linux this week? Uh, quite a freaking bit. Um, for anybody who keeps up with um, like my dot files, which I don't know that there's anybody out there that does, but um, I've updated my dot files heavily. Um, I am in the midst of adding um like a proper table of uh what key bindings I use and all that type of stuff. Um. But I actually have updated it with what I use on my system, why I use it, um, and also because I now have like rounded corners, animations, all that stuff through the custom PyCom, I, I link to that as well. So just in case anybody wants it, I've updated that. And then I have also put my computer into a cardboard box, which is awesome. Um, I've, I've literally like this... I know it sounds completely stupid and it is stupid. Like I have a computer case that I could use, but I've always wanted to see if I could put a computer in a small cardboard box and make it look just like an old shipping box that you wouldn't think anything of. Maybe even a shoe box, um, which I don't have any of those, but that's besides the point. Um, <clears throat> and I've actually done it. Um, I, I like, the thing is, is I, the reason I wanted to do it was mainly because I, I like the idea of sleeper PCs, like the idea of having a very powerful computer that no one really would look at or notice even as a computer. And um, I've actually done it. And I can also tell people if you've ever wanted to make a computer in a cardboard box, um, one of my worries was structural like integrity, like picking up the box and then just having everything move and like destroy each other. Actually, there's a reason we ship stuff in this shit. Um, it's pretty stable and I can pick everything up just fine. And I've also discovered that securing computer components inside of a box with velcro is surprisingly effective my psu motherboard hard drive everything in this in this thing is velcroed into place gorgeous it's it's awesome uh so yeah i can just it- He's gonna, just, he's gonna, he's gonna show us like there's a if that yes. like, cardboard box back there that you guys are seeing on video right now, that's yeah. his computer, <laughs> right back here, <laughs> this thing, and you can only tell that it's a computer by the one back side back here that has uh, a power cord and you know all the cords running out of it. I can honestly tell you that I've never had the interest of putting my computer, my thousand dollar computer, in a cardboard box. <laughs> uh, well, I I will say it is remarkably fun. It is a really fun and easy, uh, ho- like I don't know, t- hobby. I d- I don't know. Like it now, it's it's a very interesting task. I'd be it's not perfectly to happy do. to do it with someone else's computer. <laughs> <laughs> but not my own. <laughs> it's just not anything I would be interested in doing. But it sounds like a cool project. Um, it's it, it feels like you know those computer cases that are like basically just test benches, but they're uh, they have the motherboard like bottom where you put the motherboard and stuff. Everything connects to that, and then the outside of it is just like a open. Like there's nothing else there. It's just it's yeah. just a tray. You hang it on the wall. <laughs> Like, mm-hmm. Okay. 
those always look cool. Like you see those on the, like those YouTube channels that do setup videos. Those always look really cool. And then I think about, you know, I live on a dirt road. <laughs> and anybody who knows who, if you have ever lived on a dirt road before, dust is a thing that like literally you can go through and polish everything in your house and make it shiny. And within an, like a half an hour, the You're dust is dust. back. Especially yep. in the summer when like it's dry and it's not, you know, like snowy or whatever. Not so bad in the winter. It's you still get dust in the winter. That don't think you don't, but it's not in the in the summer. Like the the dust just, I mean, literally, it falls into your house like snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luckily, I don't have that issue, but I mean, I do have to dust it out because there's obviously no dust, you know, collectors or anything, yeah. dust filters. So I could never do one of those open box, uh, open cases, as, as as cool as they look. No. Y- y'all talk about firewalls yet? No, we <laughs> we just got started, man. We're no. we're a ways away from that. We, <laughs> and you must be. <laughs> well, welcome to the welcome Don't to worry. the Linux. We'll get into it. Cast. Ta- uh, Ram Jam wants to know uh, what your thermals are like in your. Uh, the thermals are exactly uh, the same as um, they were in the. Um, I have a, like the old computer I was using or case was a, is one of those cheap Rosewell ones. Like if you search like Rosewell case and you find like a $30 one with a blue front power button, that's the one I had. Um, it's pretty popular for people who want to cheap, cheap out on computer cases, like a lot that that's what you go with. Um, and so that's what I was using. Uh, the, the thermals in this box are technically technically better um even though i have if i tested it with prime 95 or the equivalent of prime 95 um i guarantee you the thermals would be better but from my from what i've done right now which is just you know playing games and stuff it's the same like the cpu temperature is exactly the same it's it's hovers around 68 degrees with a decent load on it um and then it'll drop down a few degrees. My room here is not, my computers will never go below like 62 degrees C somewhere around there. So it's pretty much the same. It's Glowsec has the same uh, worry that I have is that your cardboard box will catch on fire um, and burn down, burn down your house. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a reasonable worry but the motherboard again is mounted with Velcro uh, underneath the screw holes. So all the screw holes that would normally have like a standoff underneath them, there's some like there's Velcro underneath there. So the motherboard is lifted off of the cardboard box anyway. And surprisingly enough, there is uh, like I so at the back here, right above the CPU fan, there is a um, uh, a, a fan like mounted blowing out. And, uh, at the very top, I have it, like, if you can look, I was showing Matt before we started, but you can kind of see this, this is folded over here. Um, if you've ever known people who like fold up their boxes, like you take one lip, fold it over, Mm -hmm. fold the other one, and then you put the other one underneath there. Um, so since I've got it folded like that, there is a, a gap that I can fit literally three. Oh my gosh. If I could make this thing, good Lord, there we go. No, you still can't see it, but there's like a, I can put three fingers back here in this hole. There's a hole right in the middle of this box here. I can stick my fingers through there and I can feel the air coming through quite a bit. So there's, there's some pretty decent airflow in this thing. So overheating and catching on fire, it's not a, not really a problem uh, again, cause I'm also not going to be pushing the shit out of this thing. I'm not, not going to be doing anything crazy. Um, even when I compile on Gen two, I don't use all the cores. So I was, I was going to say, when you compile, stuff goes, stuff tends to get hotter. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I mean, I've I've put it under a gaming load already, and uh, for an hour. And the it's thing, no the thing was with gaming is gaming is going to tax your GPU, not your CPU, right? Well, I'm I've taken the GPU, like oh, the dedicated right. you're, GPU, you're using here. APU, right? Yeah, so if, if there was going to be any overheating issues, any fire hazard problems, I'd already know. Um, and again, because it's mounted with Velcro, I can easily remove the motherboard and check underneath it to see whether or not it's getting hot enough to 
you know, like scorch sins. Yeah. Cardboard. <laughs> yeah. Sin something or whatever. I've, by the way, I've checked that. It's, it's totally fine. All right. Oh. <laughs> I believe you. All right. So, uh, for me personally, I've been, so this is actually what I did two weeks ago. We didn't do a podcast last week. That was my fault. Uh, just life has been. Busy hey, AF. We are all fine with it because it's normally my fault. Okay. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> If you'd wait a minute, I would have found a way to figure out how to blame you on it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> uh, anyways, the, the, so some of the stuff I'm going to be talking about is from two weeks ago. But I went, I've, first of all, I, I've discovered that one of my filler words for all my videos is going through. So if you hear me say that, that I, I'm trying to stop that. Uh, but anyways, I raced I3 into a girl box thing and I redid Polybar and I learned a lot more about polybar that I didn't know uh, in terms of, especially in terms of padding and stuff. So that has been a lot of fun. And you can, if you're a member of my discord server, you can see pictures of my rice right now. And I'm going to be streaming Sunday night where I'm going to go through and um, rice. I three like five or six times because I want different themes so I can switch back and forth between them. So that'd be yeah. Sunday night. Um, But yeah, I've learned a lot about polybar. I thought I knew a lot, but I learned a lot more. Uh, I also have been... Uh, oh, I got my i3 configuration file down to 15 lines. <laughs> like 15 lines, man. It's so good. Uh, I don't know why that impresses me so much, but it does. Like, It's the smallest i3 configuration file that anybody's ever seen. It's so <laughs> good. Because uh, uh, it turns out that there is an include functionality in the i3 spec, so you can actually include other files like you would in uh like c or python or whatever yeah. uh, you can you can include to another file so i've went through and organized all of the different parts of my i3 config into different files uh, and then at the beginning it's just include this file include that file include that file and then there's just a few other lines that have to be there like setting the mod key and stuff uh, yeah. that are there so that 15 lines long uh I, again don't know why that's impressive but it is impressive for me uh <laughs> The other thing I've been doing is I'm messing around with Task Warrior. I've been wanting to do a video on Task Warrior for a while. And right now my to-do list is controlled by Todoist. And that is a proprietary piece of software. And it's really good. I really enjoy Todoist. Uh, it does a lot of good stuff. But I would like to move over to a free and open source alternative. And Task Warrior is the one that keeps getting recommended to me. So far, I'm not impressed with it. It's fine. Uh, I... I will say most of the, my problem with it is that you have to remember the flags that are, are used in the terminal in order to do certain things like add tasks, say tasks are done, so and so forth. And you got to remember all that stuff. And uh, it'd just be a matter of getting used to that stuff, but it's not necessarily something that I'm, I've am i gotten to yet. So we'll see how that goes. So those, those that's the stuff I've been working on on Linux. I've also been... Uh, Today I'm going to be working on getting a Samba share set up because I recently switched from Endeavor to Arch Linux, best to Vanilla Arch, and all my stuff obviously got wiped out. So I have to go through and re uh, you know set up all my Samba stuff so I can actually get to my files. Uh, something that I haven't done yet. I just haven't had a chance. So that's uh, that's for today. All right. So we got through the first section just fine so contact information which i don't actually have the the new contact information actually in this file so this is the old contact information uh but i think i remember everything so you can follow it on twitter at the linux cast you can subscribe to all of our stuff at the linuxcast.org which is actually a website like it wasn't a, like a hoax two weeks ago or whenever it was, and we announced that there's actual website there. It's still actually there. It has been updated now. There's also blog posts there now. So, I've been blogging a little bit. So, if you are a, a Patreon subscriber, you get the blog posts a week early. And if you don't want to subscribe on Patreon, you can follow the blog on the website. Now, I have not managed to set up RSS feeds yet because it's literally just an HTML website. There's not a, like a blog feed or any of that stuff, so this is not a complicated thing. I don't know how to set up an RSS feed to it yet, but I will try to do that uh, eventually. Uh, you can contact us via email at email at the linuxcast.org, and you can follow all of the other contact information stuff that we'd normally say here at the linuxcast.org as well. Uh, 
follow Tyler at uh, youtube.com slash Tyler OG. Zany OG. Tyler, ah, why did I do that? I it was so good. It was so close. Yeah. Zany OG, uh, that's what I meant. Tyler. Hey, look, I've I've changed that bullshit like three times anyway, so I can't even blame you. All right. I'm just saying I'm just you. saying you should own Tyler.com. I'm just <laughs> I have uh by the way, I have looked into that. Um the price for that domain is stupid. Okay. It is not affordable. The worst thing you can do is own a do- domain and then let it go. Yep. I'm just going to put this out there. So I owned, at one point, the LinuxCast.com. Like, I owned it. And then Ricky and I stopped doing the podcast for like a year and a half. So I was like, you know what? we're probably never going to come back to this. And nobody's listening to the, the episodes anyways. At that point, that was true. I was looking like five views of an ep- or uh, listens an episode. So I let the domain go away. Like, I stopped renewing it. When I came back in 2020 and found that, or that fuck, people are actually listening to this, so I just better do something with it. I went to get the domain back, and Hover wants $900 yep. for the domain that I created. <laughs> yep. No, see, it's the same thing. So, what is today, the 10th? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I have until tomorrow to, like, I have to renew my domain, zany.org. Uh, for my Gemini capsule, by the way, I actually have a Gemini capsule. Uh, you can check that out. Um, it's like a website, but better because the web's shit. Um, but anyway, um, I went, I have to renew it by tomorrow. And now when I first purchased a year of this domain, I considered getting it forever because it was about $120 to get it for lifetime. Like I'll never have to renew the domain again. I didn't do that. I went with a cheap option and just paid for a year. Now for me to renew my domain, uh, it went from like, I believe it was like five bucks to get the domain originally. Now it's $35 for a year. It's $65 for two years and $420 for a lifetime of the domain. I use Hover and it's $15 a year and it's pretty much always been $15 a year. I would murder a donkey for a lifetime option. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just, uh, they don't have it, obviously. I mean, f- why would they? <laughs> Seriously, yeah. give us $15 a year. Forever is going to be way more than b- spending $150 f- for whatever. But yeah. I would love an, a lifetime option because there's certain domains that I'm just always going to want now because I'm always going to want the LinuxCast.org. Uh, I have the his- the history uh, one that I'm going to hopefully someday quit my job and create my own history stuff. I have the domain for that all set up, so I renew that every year, even though I do absolutely nothing with it right now. Uh, I have the one for the distro watch, uh, the distro watch replacement that I really want to do. It's called DistroDB. I own DistroDB.com, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's a really cool domain, but I haven't done anything with it yet. But I want to renew it because I don't. If I do decide I'm actually going to go through with that project. You know, I want to keep the domain. If I, I know I will regret the fact that if I let that go and, and then decide to do the project, I'll have to buy the damn domain. Yep. I'm not able to get Tyler YouTube channel. Can anybody help? It's uh, youtube.com slash zany OG. And that's with a capital Z and a capital zero G or uh, OG. I'm Tyler, sorry. can you put that in the chat? Yes, no problem. I can't um, get it. OBS doesn't let me actually type things. So. Uh, I'm going to put it in here. Uh, it's zany OG spelled just like that. Um, I'm not going to do the full YouTube link cause then it'll get blocked, but just do youtube.com slash zany OG. Are you not a moderator? You're not a moderator. So it would actually block you. No. <laughs> yeah. I no, I want to make this I, I, perfectly I, clear. I, Someone else is a moderator on my channel, but you know, that's besides <laughs> the point. I I don't know you. I, you could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, I don't know you. I just do a podcast with you. Come on, man. <laughs> if I had Firefox open and I could actually, you know, go in and change that, I'd give you moderator status right now, but I can't actually do it. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Uh, to uh, uh, I, I'm gonna butcher your name, your username, Aji, in chat. Uh, j- just so you know, it's YouTube.com because I am a dipshit. I forgot this. It's YouTube.com slash C slash ZanyOG for channel. Yeah, you don't um, actually need the C. Oh, you don't. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
you learn something new every day. <laughs> yep. <All right. laughs> um, the domain name ownership is addictive because especially if you're like the entrepreneurial type and you go through and uh, have ideas all the time like, oh, this is the next big thing. I'm going to become Elon Musk. I'm going to go buy the domain name because that's the first step to, to success is buying the no domain name, yeah. right? And then that domain name just sits there and languishes forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> like that's the thing. Like the the sad thing about domain names is like when it comes to buying domains, like as an investment, you see people buying like dumb domains like xyz.com and you're like, it, it sold for $30,000. May Just maybe. I should start buying and reselling domains. Like, <laughs> and you like you have an idea, you probably should buy the domain for it. Especially if you have if you find out that it has like a unique you, know, you you come up with a name and it has the unique thing and the domain's available, you buy that domain. Yep. Even if it costs you 15 or 20 dollars a year. Because especially even if you don't ever do anything about it, maybe someday someone else has the same idea as you, like uh, mm -hmm. Disney or, or Nike or Apple has the same idea as you and they want that domain. They could come, hey, you want to, I'll give you that domain for, you know, a hundred grand, whatever. You're like, oh. <laughs> You're like, well, in that case, I mean, hey, it's worth my while. <laughs> hey, it's, all, it's paid for the host. It paid for the, the domain registry. <laughs> True. All right. all right. Moving on to the news. Tyler. Every week, you and I, we scour the interwebs for the breaking news. And it's obvious that people have come here for the news because there are no other sources of, of news on the entire internet. And we're the most timely of things, always. We always break into the, to the, your regularly scheduled programming to bring yep. you the most latest news. So, Tyler, what have you found for us this week? Well, fresh off the press right here. Uh, I hope everyone knows that Mesa 22 is out and uh, it's it brings a, a lot of improvement for gaming. Um, you get like, I mean, you can read into the article. It fix it. There's a lot of things that it fixes and adds support for. Um, particularly, I, I hope everyone like keeps us in mind. It adds direct uh, or DirectX 3D 12, so DirectX 12 support, uh, or OpenGL ES 3.1 support, um, which is big. Uh, and you can also, through this article, there is an entire paragraph. It starts with games like, and it just goes through, and these are all the different games that you can see a noticeable improvement in because of this. And this even includes apps like battle.net firefox mpv steam all of these are going or should perform much better on your systems with this new update which is awesome mm. and now this is completely not relating to this news article but it is a piece of news with nvidia getting hacked and like you know blackmailed into uh into doing i don't know a nice thing and opening up their drivers for open source. Who knows? We might not have an absolute utter garbage open source NVIDIA driver here before too long. All right. So let's just talk about that for a second. There's absolutely no way in hell that NVIDIA actually open sources. Their oh, drivers. no, 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 no. Like, there's no, no way that actually happens. There, no. the, well, not because of this. My, my kind of hope is that just the PR shit storm they get, because of this, maybe six months from now we get an open source driver. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that that happens. The no. the thing that might help is that because that information is out there, the people who develop the new the new nouveau, nouveau or whatever the hell it's called, the, the open source driver that you know nobody should actually use. Yeah. Maybe they can go through that and get some ideas. Now they could never actually use that code because it would be you know trademark infringement no. but if they could get ideas on how stuff worked maybe they can make the open source version of the the driver that does exist better that'd be cool. oh yeah oh well i mean re like even though you can't use the code directly reverse engineering the code now that you have it 10 times easier 10 times easier also maybe i mean because AMD is not opposed to reverse engineering that stuff, so maybe Hell they no. can take some and make make their open source stuff better. That'd be cool as well. Um, 
But that, yeah. I mean, see, like, that's kind of what I mean. Like, you're, you're killing my dreams here. But, like, what I mean is I'm hoping that the PR shit storm of just stuff happening around them because of this leak forces them to be like, hey, maybe, just maybe, create an open source driver. Not a bad idea. No, nope, not going to happen. If anything, what's going to happen is because they're the most petty company in the world, they'll decide that, you want to know what? Maybe the Linux community doesn't need a driver at all. Fuck you guys. You know, oh we're going to take it right off from Linux altogether. And you guys won't have a proprietary driver. If you don't if you don't want our proprietary stuff, we don't give you one at all. Fuck y'all. You know, uh, that's more. I, I find that more likely. Man. I know I'm, I'm Look, Debbie Downer. I can't help. It's it. not that you're a Debbie Downer. It's just, you know, I, I guess I'm just naive and would like to believe that NVIDIA is not that dickish of a company. Oh, but they are. But they yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. we, we know they are. <laughs> yeah. Like, a, a, as big of a dick as Microsoft has been over the last 30 years, NVIDIA has always felt like a bigger dick to me. Like, no. It just always feels like that. I don't know really why I feel that way, but it definitely feels that way. Well, um, NVIDIA's like, in, NVIDIA's the schoolyard bully who just doesn't get caught. Like, you know, there's the there's the other one who's just blatantly a bully, always gets caught. That'd be Microsoft. Yeah. But then like, then there's NVIDIA. Mi- and they just Microsoft's get away with the it. bully and everybody knows they're the bully. There's the, they're the they're the bully that the teachers know about but can't stop because their daddy's the really rich ki- rich daddy that gives the money to the school. Uh NVIDIA's the one that doesn't get caught ever, right? Yeah. <laughs> we've, I think we've dragged this metaphor as probably as far along <laughs> as it possibly could be. Um <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, so moving on. To, so I've already that Mesa thing. The thing with the Steam Deck stuff is that we're gonna be seeing more and more updates like this that change like all everything about gaming probably weekly for like the, the next year. Because companies now that the Steam Deck has proven to be such such a success and people are still really interested in it, they're gonna be working on this software more and more. Um, like yeah. Google itself now has decided that they're going to create a uh, an option to run games on Linux similar to Proton. They're going to do their own version of that. And yeah. while I don't really necessarily think that, you know, forking something, not, they're not forking it, but they're creating something new. But what I mean is um, making oh. something new that does exactly the same thing as something that else exists. <laughs> I don't think that that's always the best thing. I still think that there are companies out there that would trust Google uh, more to, and use their software because of that trust. So th- maybe things like Epic or whatever, because like Epic and Google don't really compete, whereas Epic and and uh, Steam they're direct competitors. So there's a reason mm-hmm. why Epic every time they try to use a Steam product, they they feel icky. No. Maybe they'll be more interested in this new Google thing, uh, and which could possibly lead to uh, more games coming to Linux if other game developers who don't want to work with Steam could uh, use that instead of Proton. Uh, no. Now, whether or not that ever actually comes to being, this is Google we're talking about, they could work on it for the next 10 years, then decide to cancel it. That's, I mean, so, let's just talk about Stadia for a second. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, seriously, we all knew when Stadia came out that they were going to do this. Mm. And, like, Stadia's on its death now. Like, we hear oh, the bells. If right? you if you're using Stadia and you truly believe it's not dead, you're delusional. Yeah, like don't like we told you at the beginning. I think we said said it on this podcast. Don't buy games through Stadia. Just don't do it. Yeah. Those things are going to be abandoned eventually because yeah. it's Google. Even successful products like. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's exactly like the person who uses like DOS on one of their old computers to like play around with. And they're like, see, DOS is not dead. It's not a dead project. Like, no, you just because you can still use it doesn't mean that it's alive and being developed. There's a big difference. Yeah. That's Stadia. And, and, and the thing is, I don't understand why, why they're giving up on it. Like, I don't like, sure. It hasn't taken over the world. Uh, but, at well, it's point, Google. If it's not an extreme success, they kill it. Like right, that is hands down. Like Microsoft's still having their X Cloud thing. I don't know anybody who uses it, but I'm. Sh- it's still there. Microsoft will keep it around for a long while before they cancel it. The Nvidia, um, what, what's it called? The the GeForce Now. Uh, that's supposedly really really good. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I've I've been thinking about it because there's like 
in order to play some like Windows like Steam games or whatever, it seems like that might be a better option than Proton in some cases. I know yeah. Hex DS, I know Hex DSL likes it a lot. Um, mm-hmm. so, it works pretty well, pretty well. So I mean, there obviously there is some success to be had in that area. Yeah. Why would you give up after like a year and a half? Sure, the launch for Stadia was just shit. But it's a yeah. Google thing. All of your launches are crap. Yeah. Like, seriously, they've been doing the Pixel phones now for t- 15 years. Those phones are still terrible, and they're still going. Mm-hmm. They're, <laughs> like, they're, I mean, they're good phones, but their launches are terrible. They don't, yeah. like, on paper, they don't try to sell them. And it always t- it always takes them about eight months for those phones to actually be stable. Like, this, yeah. this latest one, like... They'll get to the point where that phone is really, really good, but it takes eight months for them to get the software right, which is, yep. I mean, maybe hold off on the search engine stuff and focus some energy on your actual software stuff. But, the, but the, can the, we the, take a second to acknowledge the fact that Chrome and Google, well, not Chrome, but Google is now going to be contributing to a fragmentation issue on Linux? which I hope everyone understands how ironic that is because we're talking about a company here who very much works with other industry companies that understand fragmentation is not a good thing. And they're like, how about we just, how about we just contribute to the problem just this once? See, the thing is, is that Android used to be fragmented AF and it used to be way worse. I mean, it still, it still is, but it, no, nobody, no. Well, but Google's a company that understands that's a problem. Yeah. Like, well, like this, this, the, the hack that you, the, not the hack, but the, the vulnerability you covered in a video yesterday that mm-hmm. affects Android. And because the, 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 the most used Android version is like seven, <laughs> like most of those people not going to get the fix. That's going to cover that flaw. No. Right. And that's the, that's the problem with Android. And that's the problem that it always has. Very few people use Android 12. And it's not because they don't want to use Android 12. It's because it's all. You got to be using the newest shit, bro. Got to. Otherwise you're, you're, you're shit out of luck. I don't, I don't understand that about, about like Google as a company. Like you, you understand fully just how bad fragmentation is because you have to deal with it on a daily basis. How on God's green earth are you the company that's like, oh, we don't have enough problems to deal with around here. Let's fix that issue. Let's let's go ahead and do more work. Well, they decided to create a new operating system called Fuchsia. And they're like, well, this, this is definitely going to fix it. Um, I mean, we're talking about a company here that kills projects if they're not hyper successful. Why? Like, why would you want to do something that's already being done? Like, oh, I, lo- I love Google. <laughs> yes. Said no one. <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on to uh, my piece of news this week i uh chose this one this was actually the one that i chose for last week so the steam deck is here and the reviews are have been mostly good the only negative thing about the hardware that i've heard is that the fans are really loud mm-hmm. and i'm guessing that that's something that, that they can fix in in software those fan curves can probably be changed because a lot of the like the temperature stuff that they the the thermals and stuff that people have tested, they said the f- thermals are fine. That there's no reason for those fans to be running all the time. So mm. I'm assuming that the, the the fan curves can be fixed. The surprising thing that has the thing that has surprised me the most about this launch is that I expected there to be. Uh, for this thing to go out to the normal reviews places like you know the Verge and you know Ars Technica, and I mean really Ars Technica, but the Verge and Gadget and those sites like that, they review the thing and and their number one complaint would be, well, it doesn't play any games. Uh, sure, it has four hundred games that are for it, and it ha- that's more than any console ha- has ever been launched. It has more games available for it at launch than any console ha- has ever existed. Uh, but I almost was 100% sure, and I think we talked about this on the podcast, that when the reviews came out, there'd still be people out there who would say, well, it doesn't play this game, therefore it sucks. It's bad. Yeah. Um, I have not seen that. Most people seem to be very happy with the games that are there. Yeah, don't knock over your desk there. Your computer's in a cardboard box. May have, may have <laughs> swung my chair around. On accident? Whoops. <laughs> uh, anyways, I have not seen 
that kind of criticism. Most people seem to be very happy with the games that are available and are almost universally optimistic that as time goes on, there will be more games that are available for it. Um, no. I, I've been highly impressed with with people's acceptance of that. Even people who have no interest whatsoever in Linux. Now, there have been critiques over the SteamOS itself. Like, it feels incomplete, but this is Valve we're talking about. Their software is always incomplete. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless you want to wait 15 years for the game to come out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They feel like they're perfectionists. Like, they're always tweaking stuff. And I think that eventually the SteamOS thing will get there uh, and be a lot better. That's why I'm kind of really glad that my Steam Deck won't be here until later in the year. Same. So. Now, can we just go ahead and, and, and talk about this for just a quick second? Um, isn't it nice to be talking about a company and their problem be the fact that they're fucking, like, they're nitpicky and perfectionist about stuff? It's just a nice problem to have. You know, in this yeah. day and age, most companies don't care. Well, that's the thing that really surprised me the most. Is like, usually when these review places get something and it feels incomplete, they lambast it for being incomplete. Like, when Apple sends out, uh, has a new feature for their iPhone that developers have to support, and the support there just isn't there yet. Like, it's going to take months and months. Like, when the App Store first came out, uh, or w when they made a change to the App Store, it took a, took a while for the developers to, you know, support that feature. The review sites almost universally say, well, you know, it's good, and it's going to be way better in the future, but it's not there yet, you know? I didn't really hear that with the Steam Deck stuff. Like, they had criti critiques for the software, but almost everybody was like, yes, eventually, this thing will get way better. But also, it's four hundred dollars and is a com fucking computer. You know, like, yeah. like if you can hook this up to a monitor and have a computer. And I've heard that the monitor, the the actual computer support, like if hooking it up, hasn't been all that great. But again, I expect that to be better. Well, yeah. it's multi monitor support on Linux. That's that's literally what it comes down to. Of course, it's not perfect. Uh, I, I, my biggest complaint from the things that I've seen is that the lack of I/O. Like it has one USB C, -C no. port. Like. Well, but I'm going to go ahead and I'll defend it here. You literally should, like, if you're going to purchase this console, you should already know that you either need a USB-C hub or you should be buying one for it. Because it's 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 one of those things where if you buy any other console, you're going to spend like 60 bucks on a, on a game, uh, 50 bucks on an extra controller, no matter what. Essentially, count your USB dock as the extra controller that you buy with your console, no matter what. Because you, it's not it's not just that you need it, but if you want to get a massive amount of expanded functionality out of it, you're going to buy it anyway. So, 50 extra bucks to get a nice USB-C dock to do everything that you want to do. I don't, I don't think that's a dongle much. hanging off my console, though. Well, you should, well, but then also at the same time, you you're not going to be uh, using your console like that all the time. I also anyway. don't want two cords hanging into my console all the time either. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, well, you, again, you're not, you're not meant to have that thing plugged in all the time anyway. Yeah. I've heard so. the battery life's not that great, but you, still, you'd only have the one cable plugged in. So uh, it man, I, 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 come on. Well, let's argue about that for a second. The battery life's not great. Doug, when you're playing apex legends on a handheld device, of course the battery life's <laughs> not going to be great. I know. Like, uh, uh, I'm just I'm just saying that it could be better. I'm just, I'm not saying that it was not unexpected. I mean, like we expected yeah. it to be what it is. Like, like there's that football coach. We they we are who we thought we were. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is what we thought it was going to be. But it would have been cool to see it exceed expectations just a little bit. Um, but it didn't in terms of battery life. Um, but also four hundred dollars. You know, <laughs> it's four hundred dollars, and I don't know if anybody, I mean, everybody else seems to be living under a rock, but, uh, hello, inflation. <laughs> like, that gas is $6,000 a gallon. <laughs> Dude, it's, it, it is $5 out here where I am. That is nuts. Yeah. Yeah. It went, just went over four, like 40 here. And, um, and that's, that is absolutely insane. And it was like, if you have a diesel 
make a pickup. Oh my god, you're like, you're so screwed. Just, just die right now. You're yeah. not going anywhere. <laughs> just say, just <laughs> like, sell you can't the afford thing. it. Either that or yeah. go go to the bank, get yourself a mortgage, and I'll get you a, a tank of gas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is I, I, obviously this is going to be a problem for a while because uh, Putin is a horrible person, and obviously mm-hmm. we should. Um, I like the that. fact that now, like, if you say, like, no, no, like, Putin's not that bad of a guy. You're just, like, you are, you are alone in the world. Like, there was, there's two people in the world that do that. There's, there's, there's the, there's a Republican who's running for, all, uh, like, a, the Senate or something here in Michigan uh, who, who said, um, yeah, well, Putin's just going after Ukraine because Ukraine's a horrible place or so, whatever. Um, <laughs> like, he, he said that simultaneously while uh, while Russia bombed, like, a, a maternity ward. Like, oh, yeah, we were definitely should be defending the Russians. Uh, and then the other one is Tucker Carlson on Fox News. Like, oh, it's definitely America's fault. It's all America's fault. Uh, just because he doesn't, like, you know, buy it. I, I, I uh, love it. It's we, just we, it's we, so bad. We have gone off the fucking rails. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> but... He, when you start talking about prices you, these days, when we start talking about like buying a computer part, like w- when the Steam Deck was announced, it was a good thing to buy, and it was a good price even then, uh, because you know even if it was it turned out to be like a, a failure or whatever, four hundred dollars for a hardware con- wise, console. you got a great deal. Yeah, it was a good it was, and that was a year ago when it was announced. Nowadays, four hundred dollars. Is like what eight hundred dollars would have been then, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, you know inflation, but it's just nuts. Yep. Anyways, um, <laughs> we've got to move on to the freaking main topic. <laughs> we can't talk about gas prices. It's just it's just depressing, and it would make everybody uh-huh. really really upset and depressed. Because sorry, folks, <laughs> it's just gonna be bad. Anyways, yeah. the main topic: Should you use a firewall in this day and age? So, Tyler. Your answer to this question and your thoughts on it. Um, yes, you should. And I don't know that there's many people who would advise you to not use a firewall. Um, let's just go ahead and say, uh, if you don't use a firewall in this day and age, it's only because you just didn't install it. Like it's, it's not because they're hard to set up, hard to use. Um, I mean, sure, there there might there I, I guarantee there are some firewall solutions out there that are just terribly difficult to get set up. But as far as I know, those are not the ones that anybody's using. Like, UFW has uncomplicated right in the title. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it's uh UF using UFW is exactly as it would sound, uncomplicated. You just I mean, it's very simple and straightforward. Most like UFW is a good example of a program that understands that like flags and the way in which you use the program should just make sense. Like even if you, if you're not familiar with how to use it, once you start learning how to use UFW, like you don't have to ask questions about what something in a command meant because it's pretty self-explanatory. Like that, that's why I would say using a firewall in this day and age is should be a given. Um, like, like I don't have a firewall on this system, but it's because it's pretty new Arch install, like pretty new. It would take me about five minutes to get it set up. And also since I'm about to hop anyway, I'm not going to do it. But like it, once you have a system set up, if you don't already have a firewall installed, like there's no reason to not go and do it. It's not complicated and you definitely should have it. it the common thing that I hear is like, uh, well, you know, you need it because X, Y, and Z might happen to you. And I, I'll disagree with that. Like there's, there's not really a big chance of you. Again, most people are not really prime targets for that stuff. Like you're right. just hackers not. have other targets that are much exactly. more uh, uh, lucrative than your, Ex- than your exactly. computer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean a hacker coming after me, like even if they steal all my information, I've got like 40 bucks to my name, doc. You, <laughs> like it doesn't matter. You're not getting away with much. The, the individual so. attacks that happen is going to have to do more with malware and ransomware. Yeah. And that's all that uh, that all happens because you clicked on a link. Like seriously, never ever 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 
click on a link that you don't know exactly where it goes to. Yeah. Like, it, and it, also, can we just be honest? Don't fucking install scripts and run scripts willy nilly. Uh-huh. Like, just please don't. Like, that's like, the only way on Linux you're gonna have problems. Right. I, I'll go back to what I just said. Just don't. Be very careful what you click, especially. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Especially if you use Discord. If you use Discord, don't click on a link ever. <laughs> no. Okay. Unless you like, you know, no, no, no. Even if you know the person who's sending you the link, like you're friends with them. Like Tyler sent me a link, and I didn't know he was sending me a link. Like if it just came out of the blue, I wouldn't mm-hmm. click on the link because I would assume that his account got hacked. Because that happens all the time on yep. Discord. Like. I read all of your links that you send me. Like the Jitsi link that you saw me, read it out completely because like it's important. Like, like I will click on a link. Like if Tyler says, "Hey man, I'm sending you the audio," I know that link is coming. I can I will then click on it. Like I know that that's you and you sent that to me. But if if like t- three days from now you and I aren't talking, like like not like we're mad at each other, but we're just going about our days, and I all of a sudden, in the middle of the day, get a random text message from Tyler giving me a link. I'm not clicking on it because I didn't know that it was coming, okay? And that's the thing, especially on Discord, people get their contact all the time. Now, most of the time, those links are going to lead you to fake Nitro things, where they try to get you to sign up for Nitro when it's not really signing up for Nitro. They're stealing your credit card. Uh, First of all, Nitro is a fucking scam anyway, so don't sign up for Nitro. (laughs) Even if you're getting it directly from Discord, it is a complete scam. Yeah, right. Yeah, It's just not good. But just don't. Don't click on links, but a firewall is not going to help you with that. That that's all to do with willpower and intelligence. Okay, in in this day and age, don't click on links. Well, actually, hold on. I'll I'll disagree with you. There. It's not intelligence. It's that Ty Lopez knowledge, dog. Because <laughs> it it doesn't it doesn't mean you're not intelligent. Well, it's, yeah, it's not intelligence. It's it's links. yeah. It's, it is knowledge. It's, it's it's the no of not. Hey, don't do this. But you want to know what? My mother is eighty years old. She knows it, okay. She and she she learned it when she first started on a computer. Because, oh man, when she, we first got her into a computer, she was very resistant to get. Like we bought her a laptop. It sat in the box for eight months. She didn't awesome. want to get on get on it, right? When we finally did get her onto the internet and on the on her computer, and she signed up for an email address and started doing stuff on like Yahoo Answers or stuff like whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like she started getting these emails saying, "Hey, you won a five hundred dollar gift card to Target or a five hundred dollar laptop or whatever." And she'd show them to me, like, Matt, how do I sign up for this? Like, Mom, those are scams. And she was so upset with me. Like, how dare you take away? I, I won this. Oh, yeah. I oh, won yeah. this money, and you're taking it away from me? Like, how yeah. dare you? Like, she was yeah. very upset with me. But, now, I mean, now she's learned her lesson because she, she watches Dr. Phil. I mean, we talk about this all the time. And Dr. Phil has these, like, the the women who get, um like, uh, what, what's it called? Uh, um, catfished. When they get fat mm-hmm. catfished by someone over in Nigeria or whatever. Um, yeah. you know, so <laughs> my grandma was the same way. Like, why, why won't you let me like, they're trying to give me a thousand dollars. Like, <sighs> like it's free money. Why can't you just take it? You know, like, no, it's not free money. Like they may send you a thousand dollars, but they'll require you to send them a hundred thousand dollars first. Yeah. Or, you know? or they'll send you that a thousand dollars. You cash it. It's a fraudulent check. You're now not, now out two grand. Like, yeah. Plus, plus you're on on the, on the hook for check fraud and going to jail. Yeah. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. The, the the whole link thing. But the, the the we did meander off the whole firewall thing. So my thought on to answer the the question: Should you use a firewall? Is exactly the same as your, yours. And it is yes. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this con about this topic isn't because I thought we'd have different answers. I wanted to rant about something. Okay. Okay. Wait, hold on. If you're going to rant, that's perfect. I have to pee again really quick. So start your rant and I'll be right back. <laughs> He's really got to learn to go before we start the podcast. <laughs> this was a really good rant and he's going to miss it. I, I, like, seriously, doing a podcast by myself now. Like, he's not even here. Buddy. Hey, buddy. Come on, man. We got to do the podcast. <laughs> All right. So my rant. There are very few things that I think that Windows does better than Linux. Like, there's not a lot of things out there that I think that Windows is actually good at. For the most part, I think Linux is a, or Windows is a, a piece of utter garbage. The problem is, or the thing that 
there are, excuse me, the one thing that Windows does do that is absolutely better than Linux is that it has a firewall installed by default. And I don't understand in this day and age why there's not a universal firewall that we all use, which we all, most people who use a firewall on Linux use UFW. Uh, they use it, or they use a front end for UFW if they're using GFW, GUFW or whatever it's called. UFW seems to be the one that we've all agreed upon should be the one that everybody uses. It's the most, it's uncomplicated, it's what they can, you know, it, it's just something that's easy to use. So why isn't it installed by default? Like, this is something that should be enabled by default out of the box on every single Linux distribution. There should be absolutely no exception to that. Every single Linux distribution should have UFW. Now, you should be able to uninstall it if you want to. Like, it shouldn't be something that is, like, tied into your... Uh, it, it shouldn't be, like, snaps that is hard to uninstall on, on, a, on Ubuntu. Yes. Right? If you want to uninstall it and not use it, that should be your choice. But by default, it should be installed and enabled. Or, at least it should be, like, during install of your distro, it should say, hey, would you like to have a firewall enabled? Like a checkbox. No. Do that. And uh, have it checked by default. Most people are going to just leave it there. And bam, you've solved a lot of security problems for a lot of people who aren't interested in going into the terminal and setting up UFW or have never heard of UFW or don't know what GUFW is. You know, it, it should be something that is default um, even if we don't use UFW it may, if there's something else I don't even care if they're if we do the traditional Linux thing and everybody creates their own firewall you know I, I, I wouldn't care that it, there should be a firewall enabled by default on every single Linux distribution Windows does this like Windows has a firewall enabled by default Windows has this is the one area where Windows has gotten something right like mm -hmm. it has for a firewall enabled by default and you know why they've done like Windows is a security nightmare, so they've had to take action to solve security problems, and that's the reason why there's a firewall on Linux or on Windows by default. Linux hasn't had those problems; they haven't had to go through because they're not popular enough for anybody to really give a crap mm. about, you know, causing them problems. At least on the desktop, space. like in the in the server space, it's obviously different. But if you're running a server, you obviously know to run a firewall. You probably have a firewall built into your network. You probably well, run most a server, server distributions come with one. So right, the the point is on de on desktop Linux, it should also come with a firewall by default. That was my rant, which you, you know, I mean, I may have missed the first part of it, but um, nevertheless, I think I can can fully say I agree with all of it because okay. there should be one. Glowsec asked me, "Do I use UFW on my machine?" Of course, I do. <laughs> I mean, of course I do. It's the, one of the first things I install. It's, it's Everyone who distro hops has that one little line of programs that you always copy and paste. No matter what distro you're using, you have that one line of programs that you install absolutely first. You update your system, then you install these programs. Mine, mine are always, if, if Firefox, if it's not there, Caden Live, Audacity, UFW, Crusader, and Rofi. Those are the things I always install. Those are like the five or six programs. They're always there. And then there's a few more that have to go that I don't really remember right now. But the point is, UFW is one of them. So, yes. No. Of course I do. I mean, everybody should. And that and that's the point. Both Tyler and I have talked about this. Like, this is something that everybody should do. Everybody should have. Therefore, it should be something that is by default on no. Linux. Like every. I mean, it doesn't have to be a specific one. It doesn't have to be UFW. But just you should have one installed. Um, Agree. I, I and the and the argument own, for having one installed is not that you're going to need it, but that it's so ridiculously simple and will and stops so many different potential threats that there is like it. It makes no sense not to have one installed. No sense. Steve, does Firefox or does Fedora actually have one enabled by default? I didn't know that. Uh, I don't. I don't I, think they have one enabled. I by don't default. think I, I get. Like, I'm pretty sure I remember having to install UFW on my own and doing it myself, but um, maybe you're right. But the point As far is as I know, Fedora doesn't have one, as far I, as I know. As far as I know, there's not a single Linux distro out there that does have one installed by default. No, I've never tried anything like Kali Linux or Black Arch or anything. Like, maybe those do. Um, 
but I I know there's one popular one that has it installed or UFW installed by default. I can't remember what it is. I don't I don't, I don't think it's elementary OS. I know it's one of those like very much for new users. Maybe Zorin. I I can't remember. It's one of those ones. But yeah, I I don't I don't I don't know if if there is. I've never tried it. Um, so uh, that that's the, that's the thing. Like it, at the end of the day. This is such an easy thing to do. Like, I mean, we say don't use UFW, but everybody, I mean, I don't think that there's anybody out there that thinks UFW is bad, right? And, I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there saying, well, they don't do it this way that I want to do it, and I'm going to create my own. But there'll be always be that person in the Linux community. But most people, I think, have settled on the fact that UFW is probably the best one. Well, or, I mean, if not the best, the easiest. Like well, I, for sure. I don't yeah. even think it's a like. Honestly, I don't think I'm having a rational conversation some with someone if they tell me that UFW they is is not simple. Like, I, I we're if we're working off of the base that UFW is complicated or you don't like it because it does stuff in a more complicated or convoluted way than whatever you're using i i don't think we're having a rational conversation it's like so we're being told in the chat that mint is the distro that has ufw enabled by default that's uh, again i know it's one of the very popular uh, new user it had distros. to be mint right because i hate mint of course they're the ones that do something right yeah you have to acknowledge that they do some stuff right okay Oh, uh, I don't want to acknowledge that, but good job, Mint. I'm actually the, doing the, the whole that podcast makes sense. just cuts here. It, it just cuts to black. <laughs> this is the end. Like, like, oh, Serious. All right, but it, the the point is, is that this this whole scenario it, it's such an easy step for people to take, but most people probably don't, especially new users, especially on like Ubuntu and Linux Mint and Zorn and stuff like that. Those. Those distros should absolutely, definitely have this enabled by default. Because, yeah. um, I mean, can, also, too, the odds that a new user is going to do something that requires messing with a firewall at all is pretty low anyway. So, yeah. I don't see a reason why not to. Right, and, and, they're more, and they're more likely to get into situations where the firewall will protect them. Yeah. You know, if you're a, a, a you know, a very experienced computer user you have more common sense and knowledge about what things to avoid uh, whereas a new computer user probably doesn't have that experience right so no. it, it's i mean just, to a new user someone asking to connect to a port on your ip address they're like i mean hey they're they're offering me technical support so why not yeah and we're all we're gonna do is put a whole bunch of money in your bank account yeah 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 um, We're going to help you get that $200 refund for that thing that you can't remember you bought. I mean, every, every time you hear those stories of people who get conned like that, you're thinking, well, how can you possibly be that gullible? I mean, how can you possibly be that way? But the thing is, is that there are people out there who just don't have that kind of knowledge to avoid that. They, they don't have the cynicism that is I embedded in every computer user that should be there to know that there are bad people just like there's bad people in the city and in this in the country and stuff like that, that will stab you and take your money there are bad people online to do stuff to you and some people just don't have that basically what boils down to street smarts to know that there are bad people online that will take your money and ruin your identity and all this stuff and it's just they think the best of everybody you know they, they get on uh, you know, the, into the YouTube comments and just have great old conversations with people. They're all, everybody's my friend. Uh, What's well, that? It's that old, it's that old statement, you know, like, um, uh, you, you end up, Oh, good Lord. What, what was I going to say? Oh my God. Trust, but verify. Uh, no, um, uh, ignorance is bliss. Like, you know, when you don't know better, yeah. it, you're really happy and you think everyone's super nice and they only want the best for each other. Then you find out there's some real pieces of shit out there that you need to avoid. Right. Well, just probably about a month ago or whatever, my mom got an email that looked exactly like an email from uh, like Amazon credit card service. Like she has an Amazon credit card or something like that or used to, I don't even know. Um, and it looked exactly like what you get from Amazon. 
right? It had everything. Like, and it didn't have, like, the normal stuff. Usually, you get something like that, and it, you know it's a scam right away because they misspelled the word the. And, you know, it's you know, it's not, not a great... Grammar was definitely not there. Uh, you know, they were absent that day in school. But the this one looks legit. But the thing... Because the way they get, get you is... And they create, they make their name look like the actual email address. Yep. Like, it, like it looks like, uh, you know, security at amazon.com or whatever. Like, oh my God, this is exactly from Amazon. But do you actually look at the actual email address? It's like, it has a whole bunch of numbers and letters and it's at, you know, joeschmo.co.uk.cock. The ones that are the most evil are that, like, they're so close. Like, they're like security at amazon dot, like, C-O-T. Or C O T M, like they got the weird like dot domains. I'm like, God, like those are the ones that get me because my grand, like my grandfather's gotten those, and like they'll all they'll come close to getting me because they're yeah. they're so close to a real email that you'd get, and the email is completely accurate until those last three or four letters. Yeah. Right. So so whenever you look at someone who's been got conned, don't think them necessarily gullible. Just because yeah. they got and conned. It's just because it can literally happen to everybody because those things, those fucking criminals are freaking clever. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you know, you, you get blocked by something and, and they just come up with something different. So, no. I um, mean, that's why that, that's why I said it's not intelligence, because like that's that that's a big thing in the Linux space that I see that's like very common is assuming people should know something that you know like common knowledge to you is not common knowledge to everyone else like that's a big thing like the whole arch meme is kind of predicated on that the what makes the arch meme so popular is that's very common in the community like assuming that because i've used arch for a while or even that I haven't used Arch, I've just recently gotten into it. If you start asking me questions about Arch, like you should have seen or had access or know the same information that I do because it's freely available and I found it. So why can't you find it? Yeah. Like that's really common. Yeah, it's, you're right because it's not intelligence. It's, it's it's not even really knowledge. It's it's awareness. Like no. you got to have the knowledge to be aware that this stuff happens all the time. So you have to be aware a hundred percent of the time. It's uh, you were, you said you were watching Harry Potter. It's constant vigilance, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's always making sure that what you're clicking on is what you're supposed to be clicking on. And, and you're always aware of what the URL bar says at the top. You make sure mm-hmm. that what you're entering your information into is what you're supposed to be entering information to. And not just being aware, but being very constantly looking at things for those little itsy bitsy differences that it's going to get you. Actually, um, you know what? You saying that kind of made me think that's probably why, like, a lot of people think that nerds are very cynical. Like, when you're very into computers, like, very much into computers and the nerdy techie stuff, like, you do end up, you, you have, like, when you... Again, it's it, the ignorance is bliss. When you understand just how much shit is out there to get you and to like steal shit from you, you you become more cynical. Like it's hard not to. You 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 don't trust things like you would you you would otherwise. Yeah, it's it's definitely the reason why I know I've become more cynical because you just you see this stuff all the time, and some of it, yes, yeah, some of it, like those ladies on Doctor Phil. Those people should not be so gullible, <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah. And like, 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 there's some people that definitely should use common sense better, like, or you know, like at all. Yeah. But some people just fell for scams that are easy to fall for for anybody, even if you are, you know, not a lie day or you're you're very technologically knowledgeable, you can still fall for that stuff because you missed the fact that it's, it was dot, you know, org or dot com, instead of dot com or whatever. No. Yeah. So it's it's one of those things. So like that's the reason why, just to go back to the topic, taking the steps you need to in order to protect yourself, even if it's as simple as installing UFW or if you're really a nerd using IP tables. I mean, if you want to use whatever you want to do. Um, and, and I was looking at you there, TFL. Uh, <laughs> um, whatever you want to do, just as long as you take those steps to protect yourself. That that's it, it's like we're wearing a seatbelt. You know, it, it, you don't expect to get in a crash. You don't expect for somebody to t-bone you. But wearing a seatbelt 
can save your life. It's like giving a COVID vaccine. You know, yes, who cares? It's become political and all that nonsense. But you're not, you're not doing this because Biden told you so. You're not doing this because Trump told you so. You're not doing well, this I, because, I love that argument. Like, like I'm going to get a vaccine because of some political reason. Like, I, I love how like this has totally changed. Like, right. dude, if you're if you're anti, like if you don't want to do something, don't do it. Like it's the same thing with the firewall. Like if you don't want to right. get protected, that's fine. But the you know the, the whole point of this conversation end. is not that you need to do it, but that it's so simple and can save you through so many different things. You right. should just go ahead and do it. But right. it's fine it's, if you don't. Like it's okay. Right. Like, as long as you know that at the end of the day you're vulnerable to certain things. You know, mm-hmm. you you know whatever. The the point I was making was that you know. You don't do this because of other people. Like you don't do this because I told you so or Tyler told you so. You don't do this because it's the right thing to do. You do this because you want to protect yourself, and no. it, 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 that's the bottom line. It's 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 any of these things that are are meant to protect you, uh, and people have somehow made it you know co- you know complicated. At the end of the day, it, it's really very simple. Take as much. Take as many steps steps as you can to protect you th- on the internet. Make sure you're, you know, and you even if it's just something as simple as being aware and using a firewall and using virus software if you're on Windows. Those three things, you're probably good. Those are the minimum things you should do. And then if you become more nerdy, you can add things like using a VPN and all this stuff. You can dive down the rabbit hole as much as you want to. Uh, but you take those minimum steps, ev- which everybody should take, and mm-hmm. you'll be happier and you'll be safer, even if they just run in the background and you never think about them. No. Okay. <laughs> allow, so, ro- allow root login always. Yes. A hundred percent. Okay. So just a story on that. On the Arch Linux GUI, which I used to install Arch Linux this time, if you mm-hmm. delete... SDDM, the, the display manager, and then you reboot your computer, it logs you into root automatically. Like, automatic log. Epic. Like, what? <laughs> like, no, that's not the way it's supposed to work, man. <laughs> just don't do that. I, now, I don't know if that's the same case if if it's just on Vanilla Arch Linux, if that's a Vanilla Arch Linux thing. Like, if you're on Vanilla Arch Linux, you installed it the traditional Vanilla Arch Linux way, and then you install SDDM or LightDM or whatever, and then you uninstall it. If you then you log back in, if it takes you to a TTY where you are logged into root automatically, I don't that I don't know if that's the case. But on this instance of Arch Linux, we're, we're using the Arch Linux GUI. If you uninstall SDDM, which is what comes by default on the Plasma version at least, and then log back in or reboot and go back, it takes you to a TTY where you're automatically logged in as root. <laughs> now little- this is what we call. Um, not a problem, kids. This is a hundred percent fine. This is one of those nifty features that Microsoft <laughs> would add in their OS. It is. A, it's a. It's a feature. Um. Yeah. It's, the, <laughs> it's not. It's not a. It, it, it's not a security flaw where, for whatever reason, they've clicked. They've enabled automatic login. Uh, that's, that's not, not a bug. Not a bug. Feature. Right. So every week. So we moved on to the from the main topic. Every week, Tyler and I rack our brains for things that we are interested in using and sharing with the community. And then I bump my mic. Um, mm-hmm. Don't worry, I'll head, do it too here in a second. These headphones are bigger, so they're also <laughs> ha- they also have uh, metal on the outside, so the, you're going to hear clangs all the time every time I hit the microphone. But anyways, so uh, the thingy of the week is what we've called it, for lack of a better name. The thingy of the week. So Tyler... It's still pretty accurate. It's what we've adopted. Tyler, your thingy of the week. Mine is pretty easy because uh, uh, obviously I don't prepare for stuff like I should. So this is on the fly. Jitsi. Because it's awesome. And we've replaced Discord. So let's go. uh, Can we like talk for just a few about uh, how nice it is and how we won't be going back to Discord? Yeah. Jitsi is... so. When we when Tyler first joined the podcast, we uh, did the, our usual due diligence and we tried everything. Like we tried Discord, we tried Telegram, we tried Element, we tried uh, Jitsi, and the one we settled on was Discord because of the way it did grid mode, and that's that's the reason why we tr- we tried it. 
because at the point at the point where when that happened, Jitsi apparently didn't have grid mode, or there was some reason why we didn't choose it. So we we settled on Discord, and uh, we kind of lulled ourselves into a sense of this is as good as it's gonna get, right? It's it, it, it's one of those things where you know, it wasn't great, but it really felt like our only option. Yeah. Uh, but then I got a new camera, and you got a new camera, and for whatever mm. reason. Discord does not like the Logitech Brio. Like we have the same camera. No, no it does not. It, it just really doesn't. doesn't. It, it does not like it. And it, every like, uh, you can't even say like every five seconds. It's there's. It's not that. Uh uh-uh. it's, 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 it's it's completely, completely random. Completely random. S- sometimes completely. it'll be, you, you go ten minutes without saying a green flash. Other times it'll do it like five or six times right in a row. Mm-hmm. It's the dumbest thing. And anybody who's watched the podcast in the last few weeks since I got this camera will have seen this. Yeah. Uh, on my feed where and, and hopefully in one of the podcasts i believe it was in one of the podcasts but one of the flashes was egregious like it you didn't have a flash for like three or four minutes and then it flashed and it was solid green for like i counted like five seconds yeah and then it, was, it came back it was bad and like everybody talked about this and like in the comments like what is this annoying green flashing like yes i know it's discord the, the thing is discord so, we decided that there's no way to fix it. Like there, there is a, a VF V4L loopback or something like that uh, that would have solved the problem, but it's complicated AF. Like it yeah. was not an easy solution. And uh, even that one is supposedly. I had heard supposedly yeah. it Plus, fixes it. I distro hop way too often to have to set up something that complicated every single time I want to do a podcast. Yeah. So, uh, what we decided to do is we'd find something different. So last night, Tyler caught you know ring up and said, hey, Matt, let's go through and try to find a, uh, an alternative. So we did. We spent a good two hours. We tried Telegram, we tried Element, and we tried Jitsi. Uh, the Telegram was just not an option. Yeah. The, the the quality there was, oh, God, it was so bad. It was just, yeah. it was so bad. Like, like, and, like then, it was like and then your camera through. would be tiny. Like my camera, your camera, whoever's like actually like you're sending the video, your feed is like this big. Yeah. It's like maybe 20 pixels in the bottom right hand right. corner. And, and you know that all they did for the bigger picture, the person on the other end, so you can see them, all they did was to take that little one and they blew it up. They didn't yeah. know. <laughs> like you can see pixels on his nose. Like you, the, the pixels were the, like an inch wide. It was that bad. So then we t- tried Element and the quality there in Element was actually really good, but they don't have grid mode. Like, nope. Uh, like they no refused grid to mode. implement grid mode. And we had to have grid mode because we have to be side by side. Yeah, but we have to take a second here. Thank Christ, they removed the dialer. Yeah, finally. the dialer is gone. <laughs> finally, that that thing caused so many what the f's and like, what is it even used for? Is this thing black magic? Like, what is it? Because because yeah, I'm pretty sure nothing. <laughs> exactly, like it like, did nothing. <laughs> I half wanted to call nine one one through it just to see if it actually like if that's its function. Like that's the only thing it can do. Like if you're having a call with somebody and you need emergency services, like you have a dialer for it. Like I don't, I honestly have no idea. Yeah, yeah, but it's gone. I think it, that is gone. But yeah, they don't have grid grid mode, so we can't do the side by side now. I know that some there's like a technology called NDI or something like that that some applications have and I'll look into that and see if we can try that cuz I think Jitsi supports that as well and that's where um uh like OBS would be able to take the actual feeds of each of our videos oh. and use them as actual like inputs so you wouldn't oh, have okay. to I wouldn't have to like screen capture the video which is what I have to do now but anyways the next thing we tried was Jitsi and um man is it so good like it's so good. Even last night, like last night, the quality wasn't all that great. Um, on, on your end, like you, you, we could, it was fuzzy. But the, it's way better today. Like it was three three sixty p last night. Like today, seven twenty p is and that's fine. Uh, because mm-hmm. I'm gonna, it's smaller anyways. The, the, it, 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 but it's it's so good. Like the the latency, not a problem. Uh, lots of settings and stuff like that. Like we can change the background if we wanted to change the background and stuff. Like it's really, like really good. They have, they have more backgrounds and blur effects and stuff than discord does. Like what? Huh? Like, 
And the fact that I was considering paying Nitro for the privilege of getting more of those shitty backgrounds and shit. I didn't even and, know Discord had backgrounds, to be honest with you. Uh, well, I it, was considering it, paying Discord to be able to do 1080p. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Um, they recently <laughs> added that into Linux. It was in Windows for a hot minute. And then all of a sudden they're like, I guess we'll push it out to the Linux people. Uh, but anyways, yeah, Jitsi turns out freaking amazing. Really, really good. Um, we're we're going to spend the next week trying to figure out how to self-host it. Because apparently w with a self-host, you can change the quality up to 1080p. And if we can do 1080p video cameras, like like actual use 1080p on a video camera, on a, on a webcam, like it's going to be like awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be so good. Um, the video quality know. might actually impress yeah, like people that actually want to watch the podcast instead of saying, <laughs> "Well, you want to, we're here for the jokes." The the video quality is just meh. All right, yeah. they just load up the video and they just they just listen to it like it's a podcast on Spotify. My, I think most most people probably do that anyways, but that's okay. And that's okay. There is, by the way, there is, for those of you who just are subscribed on YouTube and you want to watch or you don't want to watch this whole like hour long thing, there is an audio version of the show. Uh, linuxcast.org there's links to our anchor page where you can find uh, more links to the places where we have syndicated the podcast so it's on Apple Podcasts it's on Spotify uh, it's on like Pocket Cast and all those things it's on like 10 different uh, platforms you can go there you can also find that RSS feed if you want to use your own podcatcher so if you're using something like uh, the 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 Tui pod thing that I don't remember the name of uh, you can enter the URL there there's a there's a open source rss feed that you can use and get all the audio stuff there as well so that's linuxcast.org in order to get those links and stuff so um my thingy of the week is called link shortener now i don't know if this is open source or not i don't i don't really care at this point um but i found myself more and more sharing links to stuff like in video descriptions and if you put like a video uh, a link in your video description that is like a random link like it's like, like it's, it's 10 miles long and has random you know like stuff in it it looks nasty right it's like it looks really bad so I, I i needed a link shortener i just used to use bitly all the time uh and then i have to go to a website paste in the url get the new url then go back to the what the site i was on paste it there it's a pain in the ass but there's a extension called link shortener it's in firefox it is in chrome it's in edge and all that stuff i think they're all called the same um and uh Tyler's distracting me now with backgrounds. <laughs> uh, but anyways, link shortener, it, it's just, it just sits up in your bar. You click it, it gives you a shortener link for the link that you, of the, the tab that you're on. So that's really cool. Um, and it's uh, definitely very useful. I, like, I use it all the time now. So that's my thingy of the week. So, wow. That, by the way, we recorded for an hour and 20 minutes. We've been... Uh -huh. uh, uh, live for an hour and 47 minutes <laughs> and we were going before that for over an hour so we've been going for almost three hours now and i am so sick of looking at your face i'm just saying this <laughs> i know i know <laughs> like, like, like i i loved you at the beginning but now i'm sorry man it's over see i, I see i'm still <laughs> fine with you but man i have i've been having to look at my own webcam and i'm like damn like i hate myself now so much <laughs> it's just it's not good like <laughs> no man, i'm just I, i'm just joking um <laughs> <laughs> so that is it for uh this week's uh podcast coming up next week i don't even know uh we're yeah i need to do some episodes uh, i need to fill some yeah, stuff tyler in. needs to come up with a topic so it's because it's his turn we alternate topics by the way i don't know if anybody actually know this but we go through and uh we alternate topics so i do one he does one we go back and forth or at the that, very least we try to we, we try to but tyler's a slacker yeah exactly yeah uh, and i'm also slacker but you know, i'm more so he, yeah. he's a big he, he's just more talented when it comes to slacking what can i say you're 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 very good and talented Thank you, slacker man. tyler it means a lot most very, people don't most people don't acknowledge it and it's and it's upsetting Thank very you. impressed you should get a t-shirt uh head <laughs> head slacker on a t-shirt <laughs> chief slacker the master master slacker chief uh, slacker i like that one <laughs> anyway so that i have no clue what we're doing next week we record this live every thursday at three o'clock p.m eastern time unless something else has come up and we have to cancel or postpone or whatever uh you can also find, uh, usually I announce that kind of stuff on my community page on the YouTube channel. So YouTube.com slash Linuxcast if you haven't subscribed. 
Uh, before I go, I'd like to take one thing my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Patrick L, Fred, Meglin, Jack, Sam, Tool, Steve A, Sabri, Lennox, Garrick, Samuel, Mitchell, R, Center, Carpeted, Jamie, Sean, Odin, Martin, e, Andy, Merrick, Camp, Josh, Lee, mm -hmm. J-Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark, Venice, Six, Vlad A, and Primus. Whew. Um, by the way, when I record a video, it takes me f 10 takes to record all those names. Because I'm mm -hmm. always mixed up on Jack's knife and tool. I'm, I'm, I just stutter through it. So I always have to start over. For whatever reason, when we're live, I can do it in one shot. It's so yeah. weird. Let me just go um, ahead and thank my patrons for only being like eight of y'all. So it's real easy. <laughs> yeah, Tyler does have a Patreon page. I don't know what the URL is because he... Hey, it, don't, it, don't it, chill it, man. I'm completely fine. I, hey, look, I got eight people, like maybe nine, who are like super supportive, awesome people. And it's really easy to remember all their names and say them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We all want to be like DT. DT. DT shows those the his Patreon page at the end. He's got like four pages long, and yeah. he makes like two thousand dollars a month or whatever. We all want to be like DT, but I I couldn't read out all. We all don't want to have to say stuff like because you start off saying your patrons like, and then and then you're like, oh, now I see why bigger YouTubers have just a page and they don't even attempt to say five so, of them. See, so the thing is, is is DT still does say the names of the top tier of patrons and. Mm -hmm. he, I I would like to ask him how many times he has to redo that at the end because he says them really fast. I'd like to know how many times he has to does that do that take because I bet you if if he's anything like me, uh, I bet you it takes him a couple times. Because <laughs> oh, I mean that's the thing. Like I I genuinely don't think people understand how upsetting it can be to like record a lot through a video, get a lot of a video done, and then spend like six takes on like a 30 second portion of your video because you can't say shit properly. The hardest part of my video, every single video is saying the names at the end. And, and it's not that I'm, <laughs> I feel ungrateful for saying that because these people give me money. Uh, yeah. But I'm just saying that sometimes it's hard, uh, saying the names is hard because I try to go to, my biggest problem is I try to go through them fast, right? I try to make them fast. Uh, I should, if I went through them and said, you know, just did them slow, I would do it all in one take, but I do go through them too fast. So anyways. Yeah. Well, let's be honest. The aggravating part is the fact that it is so easy. You just have to say these names and you're thankful because these people support you and you're like, this should be easy, but it's not. <laughs> Go fix that I should sing them. Okay. I would lose all of my subscribers if I started singing. <laughs> like every single person would run for the freaking hills. Uh, I'd uh, ironically create another account and subscribe just for that. <laughs> it's so I can't I, I can draw better than I can sing and I can't draw. So <laughs> same. Also, I keep bringing up the, 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 the thing. I, I really got to not put the mouse over the dizzy call. Anyways, I, I forget that many times. Because I'm just here playing around with my mouse. And wee! It's like a fidget spinner. Anyways, <laughs> that is it for this show. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.